In the previous uh, video, we learned how to configure the CP server both on the router and on the switch. So today, I want us to finish on the dedicated DCP server. On firewall, we'll do it later because this is not a firewall session. And uh, hopefully, we jump to the three DCP server configuration on the router plus interval and routing. Then, DCP server configuration on uh, layer three switch and interval and routing. And finally, DCP server configuration on the dedicated DCP server device plus uh, interval and routing. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm stressing on this area because uh, during implementation of any network, this normally appears. I mean, either of the three. This one, this one, or this one. So you should understand how to do all of them. So before we can do uh, the three here, I want us to look at uh, the DCP server configuration on dedicated DCP server device. Okay, so I'll just go back. Um, so in this video, we need a router, that's 2911 router. I will need a switch, 2960 switch, and uh, computers. And a, a dedicated DSCP server device. So I'll choose this DSCP server, just server PT, and you paste it here. Okay. So I will connect uh, the router to the server and then uh, I'll connect this one to this one and the three so um, so just turn them to DCP I turn all of them to DCP and also this I turn to TCP. Okay. So in this case, um, we are doing DCP server device on DCP dedicated device. I mean, we are doing DCP server configuration on dedicated DCP server device. So in the previous video, we learned how to configure DCP server on a router on a let and on a layer 3 switch so here this is this should be our dscp server dscp server yeah so it's this device that is going to provide ip addresses to these devices here so we are not going to touch this switch we are going we are only going to touch these two devices and let's begin with the router the only thing we're going to do uh, with the router is to assign IP addresses to the interfaces, this one and this one. And tell this interface that whenever you receive any request that this computer needs uh, IP address, then forward that request to this DCP server. We are going to tell this interface that this one that whenever you receive any request from these computers that they need IP address, then forward that request to this DCP server. Okay, so let's assign IP address to this one and this one. Um, so the first, we, we have to identify them, so I'll just show. I'll just try to show the. Uh, I'll try to show. so this is gig zero one. This is gig zero zero. So just a little bit of comment. Let's say this network one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot zero slash twenty four. I copy that link and I paste on the other side and make this one two dot twenty four. I mean two dot zero slash twenty four. Okay. 
So I let us sign gig zero one uh one is two one dot one. So uh enable config t so interface gig zero slash one gig zero slash one this one gig zero slash one should be I this IP address this network one and two dot one sixty eight dot one dot one IP address IP address to be that one with a subject mask of two two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero oh IP address IP address and you hit enter then you see it's down so we need to turn it up just say no shutdown no shut so it's up and we say I said that um, we need to tell this interface that this one whenever you receive any request tell this interface that whenever you receive any request from this computer that they need IP addresses then forward that request to this DSCP server relay that request this computer will try to request uh, uh, IP addresses you know there are some messages they send so that they can uh, be given IP addresses they are not just being given IP addresses they have to exchange some messages so whenever these computers try to uh, send that message that I want IP address that message will get into this interface of the router and this interface uh, with this configuration that it should relay that uh, that request to this this server uh, you know the server will receive the request from these three computers and provide them with IP addresses so let's assume this server we are going to give it IP address of uh, 192.168.2.254 so I copy that I copy that let's just assume the server we are going to give this IP address so we are telling this interface that interface gig zero gig this one that one that whenever you receive a request from these computers that they need IP address then forward that request to the server so how do we how do we relay that information which command tells us will tell this interface to relay that information it's just a simple command we just say IP help help uh, address to be that of the server that I've just copied and that's all so whenever this uh, interface will receive any request from these computers it will it will forward that request to the server and I hit enter so exit that interface now let's assign IP address to this interface, which is gig00. So interface gig00. Mm -hmm. Interface gig00. IP address I want it to be 2.1, 2.1. Uh, so 192.168.2.1 with a subnet mask. And I hit enter. And because it's down, let's turn it up. We just say no shut. And that's all we just do right that's on the on the router now we move to the DCP server it's on the DCP server that we're going to create the pools now remember previously we were doing the pools on the router and on the multi-layer switch but now we're going to do the pools on the DCP server here so we are done configuring uh, the router. What we did on the router was just the IP addresses from, of this interface and of this interface. And most importantly, we were telling this interface that to relay any request from these computers to the server using this command here. Okay, so we can close the router and open the DCP server. The first thing we do on the DCP server is to assign it IP address statically. Make sure 
that you sign a, a DCP server IP address statically, static IP address. So let's take uh, the one that we just gave that we gave it earlier, this one, and separate mask. Then um, we assign it default gateway. The default gateway should be IP address of this interface, gig00. So you can see gig00 is 2.1. If I hover, you can see gig00 is 2.1. So that's the default gateway of our DCP server. Good. All right. So uh, the next thing that you do now, after you've configured data with the static IP address, and make sh and you made sh you made sure that uh, the default gateway is the uh, the correct interface that is connecting. And uh, if you just can ping, if you can just try to ping ping um, two dot one, and it's pinging, that's okay. So we can go ahead and configure DCP pools for this network. So click on the server and come under services click on the services then come under dcp here you click on dcp and enable it after you've enabled it we want to name our pool let's say this was our let's say this is this was uh, uh, uh this was uh, it department let's just assume this was it department So you create a pool by the name IT department. We just edit the, the, the existing one. We just say add IT depth pool, and you give the uh, default gateway of of IT department. Default gateway of IT department should be IP address of this interface. And as you can remember, we have already told this interface that whenever you receive any request, forward to this route. So IP address of this interface was uh, 1.1. Uh, 1.1. DNS server, we don't want to discover, uh, to configure DNS server here, but we can just configure it as the IP address of uh, the server. No problem. So the setting IP address should be, uh, let's say, 1, mm, one 2, let's say 1.11. The DCP, uh, the, the DCP server should start giving host IP addresses from dot eleven, so that we can reserve from dot one to dot ten, maybe to give to uh, give to uh, other devices in the network, but it requires static IP address like printers. Yeah, so it's very very important. We just come to services. You click on DCP. The first thing you do enable DCP, then Check on your topology. This is IT department. Create that pool. IT department pool. You can even include an iPhone there. Then you give default gateway. You come to IT department and say, oh, which is the default gateway of IP, IT department? IT department. It should be IP address of this interface and include it there. The next server as per now, we have not configured, but you can give it as your uh, default gateway or IP address of DCP server, no problem. Then you indicate uh, starting IP address. Let it start from dot eleven because we want to reserve from dot one to dot ten. And you add. You just click on add, and that's all. So if I go back to this computer, if I go back to this computer, and I come to IP, you can see it's already been assigned IP address. From the DSCP server. If I come to this one, come to IP, I uh, think it's still loading. If you come to static again, you refresh it, it will come. I think this one will take dot twelve. You see, uh, and every parameter that we configured there. And finally, when you come to this one, uh, to DSCP, uh, it has picked dot thirteen. So it's very, very simple and very, very important because in our major real world networking projects, we are not going to load or uh, uh, over, overwhelm the routers with too much configuration. Configuration like DCP server should be done on dedicated DCP server device.
without loading the overwhelming the router with too much configuration so maybe if you have the question i will uh, answer so that we proceed so uh for this uh, particular part for the services i well, so you have to do dsp and of How do you end up by this uh, a like a star IP address the eleven? I didn't catch that. And the number of uh, and uh, the number of users. Yeah. Okay, so you know the number of users is uh, calculated automatically based on your subnet mask. So if. Uh, mm -hmm. You're talking about this 11. Yeah. Start IP address. Well, you know, when you configure this TCP server, you know, and you don't give a starting IP address, just let's say the starting IP address should be dot one. And I save. Uh, I'll come back here. And uh, I come to static again and come to mm -hmm. TCP. You, you will mm -hmm. see it's taking around something dot two. Yeah. Yeah. And dot one, you see, it's taken by default gateway, so it cannot understand that. Yeah. So let me explain better. The reason why we're giving it a start, a start IP address like that is to reserve some IP addresses. You know, so in the network, you have to reserve some IP addresses. They'll be to send to other devices like printers. You know, printers, when you connect them via network, we don't want them to, you know, changing IP addresses. Because every time they get into the network, you know, with the DCP, will, they will require IP addresses. So we need to assign them with a static IP address that uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, it cannot be changed easily, you know, maybe manually, but not with IP, but not with the DCP. Because with DCP, you know, it will only allocate uh, the hosts that are available IP addresses. So when you already, let's say, um, you configured your computer to print to, you know to use a printer which is having 192.168.10.10 and uh, the printer is using dcp then unfortunately the printer is off and another computer in the network has come up and has taken that ip address so you know it's conflicting the computer is having the same the, the new computer is having the same ip address that the printer end so the printer came is coming up again it's finding that oh my ip address has been used by another uh computer so it it gets a new ip address but back in your computer you configured your printer to your your i mean you configured it to print to a printer that is located at 10 or 10. so it's finding that 10 or 10 is now a computer but no longer printer so that's why we need to reserve some ip addresses so we are telling the cp server that start issuing ip addresses from 1.11 don't issue ip address from 1.1 to 1.10 so it can issue ip address from 1.11.12.13 but something like 1.1.2.3 until 10 don't touch them we want to reserve mm -hmm. them for static allocation mm. yeah okay now you understand that yeah okay any other issue no okay so i think i've done that so we need to proceed mm. so we need to do this dcp server configuration uh on the router plus in the VLAN routing okay so I'll draw another topology. So in that topology, I'll need uh, a router as normal. And uh, I will need a switch. And uh, let's say six computers.
then we do connection So in this video, uh, I'm, in this topology, I'll assume that this is VLAN 10 and I need three VLANs for demo and this is VLAN 20 and finally uh, this is VLAN 30. This is VLAN 30. So I'll do the comments very, very fast. So for example, let's say this is VLAN 10. A network of uh, 192 dot one sixty eight dot uh, one dot zero slash twenty four and then uh, this comes to one twenty two dot zero and finally this comes to one thirty uh, three dot zero <coughs> Okay, so um, in this topology, we are going to do uh, a lot of things here. The first thing that we're going to do is VLANs. We need to uh, create VLANs and assign them to ports. So before that, just turn the computers to DCP, DCP, all of them. Um, to DCP, DCP, all of them. Okay. So the next things. The next thing that we do, we create VLANs on the switch and assign them uh, to the ports. So let's do that very, very fast because you can see we have three VLANs here. And uh, each VLAN is in a different network, as you can see. So in, 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 a, in other uh, design, you can have multiple switches. But in this case, I just have only one switch. So just click on the, uh, on the switch and we create VLANs. Enable. Uh, config T. So uh, the first thing that we do, we create VLANs, VLAN, let's say VLAN 10, uh, name to be IT, I exit VLAN, te, VLAN 20, uh, name to be HR, HR, and finally VLAN 30, name to be finance, VLAN 30, name to be finance finance fin exit all right so after creating vlans we now assign them to the interfaces so for example uh this these two interfaces that are connecting to vlan 10 i mean these two interfaces that are connecting to it department should be in vlan 10 so this is F402 and F403. So I just say interface range F02 to 3. Then we say switch port. Mm, sorry, just a minute. So interface range that one, then we we'll send them roles of access ports because we need, if you need to send VLAN, then port should be in access port, access mode. So just say switch port uh, mode 
axis then make these ports access VLAN 10 because you can see here VLAN 10 so you just see switch port uh, access VLAN 10 make them access VLAN 10 and exit so we move to a new bunch of interfaces uh, this interface and this interface FA04 FA and FA05 to be VLAN 20 so we just go here and say interface range 4 to 5 4 to 5 then we make them access switch port mode access then to access VLAN 20 then we exit and finally we go to the the two interfaces which is FA06 and 7 for VLAN 30 so the same thing uh, interface range 6 to 7 6 to 7 which port mode access make them access then access VLAN 30 exit and uh, do right so uh, the next thing that we do being that this switch here is connected to this computer through this interface FA01 and in this topology we have multiple VLANs VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30 and the default VLAN 1 so if I can just say uh, do show VLAN <coughs> You will see we have these VLANs here. VLAN 1, 10, 20, 30. VLAN 1 is called default 10, IT, 20 HR, and finally 30 finance. And you can see VLAN 1 is having the post that have not been assigned uh, any v VLANs. So VLAN 10 is having the 2, uh, VLAN 20, the 2, and finally VLAN 30, the 2. And you know, if you want to communicate in any IP network, you know, through different IP, uh, different networks, by default, this network, this network, and this network cannot inter inter communicate. They cannot communicate with each other because they are different networks. So for them to communicate, then they need a router. So if this one wants to communicate with, let's say, VLAN 10 wants to communicate with VLAN 20, then it will uh, it will first go to the router and come back to VLAN 30. If VLAN 20 want to communicate with VLAN 10 or VLAN 30, then they will have first to go to the router, then come back to VLAN 10 or 30. So, for them to pass this interface, this interface should be trunk because an access port only allows. Uh, passage of one VLAN that has been assigned to it. So by default, this interface will only allow VLAN 1, the default VLAN to pass through. So we must make it to be trunk to allow passage of multiple VLANs, being that we have these VLANs here in the network. So let's make this one trunk. So interface uh, FA zero slash one just says switch port mode trunk. That's all. Exit, exit, do right. So we are done with everything on the switch. Just create VLANs, assign ports uh, VLAN IDs, and make this in connecting interface to be trunk. <coughs> so everything that is remaining <coughs> is here. Everything that is remaining is on the route. So let's begin the configuration. The first step we do on the router is to configure intervillan routing to provide a mechanism through which uh, different VLANs uh, will communicate. So in the previous uh, in the previous uh, video or in the previous class, uh, we learned about intervillan routing. Intervillan routing uh, using a router on a stick 
and the switch virtual interface or using layer 3 switch so in this router in this in this net topology we have a router meaning we have to use router on a stick and how do we use router on a stick we create sub interfaces and we assign them we associate them to vlans so let's say this interface is gig 00 so for a, for vlan 10 we're going to create a sub interface like interface gig 0 0 dot 10 for 20 dot 20 for 30 dot 30 then we associate them to a respective vlans so let let me go i click this <coughs> the first thing i'll do i'll turn that interface up so it's uh, enable uh from 50 interface gig uh, 0 so 0 so no shot and that's all so it's up so it's upon us to create sub interfaces for each villain so let's start with villain 10 villain 20 and 130 so when you're creating sub interface make sure that you send ip address and you associate it to that villain so let's do that exit so interface gig 0 slash 0 dot 10 for vlan 10 so it's up then before you assign ip address associate it first to this vlan how do we do that we just say encapsulation dot 1q10 the vlan id and you hit enter then you assign ip address let's say uh, this sub interface should act as will act as default gateway of this department here so let's take 10 1.1 1 .1. so we just say uh, ip address to be 1 and 2 dot 168 dot 1 dot 1 7 mask of 255 255 dot 255 dot 0 and exit so we are done with VLAN 10 and don't forget this we are going to use this during uh, DCP server allocation or creation so let's not forget this all right so let's go to the second sub interface for VLAN 20 so uh, just uh, try to retrieve gig 00.20 hit enter then the first thing that you do you associate it to vlan 20 using which which command encapsulation dot one q 20 then you give it a prs a prs should be 2.1 let's give it 2.1 something like that 2.1 because the network is 2.0 slash 24 and you exit finally we create a sub interface for vlan 30 just similar thing that's in the VLAN routing then you associate to VLAN 30 encapsulation uh, dot, dot 1q 30 then you give it IP address of let's say 3.1 exit all right so we are done the first phase of configure on configuring the CP server on the route so let's create the pool so let's get into dcp server configuration we were still uh doing the initial process of uh facilitate facilitating these villains to communicate now that we've uh, done the first phase now let's do the dcp server configuration let's create the pools so how do we configure dcp server we are going to create three pools one pool for IT department, another pool for HR, and finally for finance. Finance will on 30, HR will on 20, IT uh, will on 10. So let's first create a pool for IT department. Before that, don't forget to this uh, to enable um, uh, DCP service service DCP to enable that service. Then we create pool. We just say IP. DCP pool 
pool IT, IT, IT pool. Just say that. And we assign it this network. Assign this network, which is the network, just say network, to be 192.168.1.0, seven mask of 255.255.255.0. And now you assign it default gateway. So default gateway should be the default gateway of this pool, IT pool, should be uh, the IP address of the sub interface. You remember the sub interface that we created here for this one. So this should be default gateway of IT pool because it's the one that has been associated to VLAN 10. We associated it to VLAN 10 here. So it should be default gateway of it pool so just a default router to be 102.168.1.1 so in this case you can decide to uh, configure dns server or just leave but uh, let's just configure it uh, 102.168.1.1 you can you can configure anything for dns server it's not important in this case they'll reach a time when it's very very important so exit. So we've created a pool for IT department and assign this network which is here and default gateway which is the IP address of the sub interface that was associated to VLAN 10. This gig 010 was associated to VLAN 10 having this IP address. So if I go to VLAN 10 here now and I click to IP, you can see it has taken IP address. So let me just come to static so that you can pick default gateway and yes, you can see it has picked. But for uh, VLAN 20, uh, there's nothing yet. There's nothing yet. Because we've not created the pool. What is guiding here is, uh, what is guiding us here is the inter -villain routing configuration is the one that is telling that that pool should go this way and that pool should be assigned to this so let's uh, uh, create the pool for hr so the same way we did for it the simple configuration like this the just four lines let's do it for uh, hr so it's just uh, ip dcp pool pool for HR uh, pool, just as a HR pool. Then you give it a network. The network should be 2.0. Two, two, two two and default router should be 2.1. You can remember, default router should be default. Oh, that default, um, that's DNS server. So let's configure default router to be 2.1. Okay. So you can see here, 2.1 comes here in that we created a sub interface and associated it to VLAN 20. You can remember this sub interface, it was associated to VLAN 20 and its IP address should be this one. And that IP address should be the default gateway of VLAN 20. So it's here. So exit. Now let's go back here again. And uh, you can see DSCP server successful. I try to request again. You can see it has picked everything. Now, if you come to VLAN 30, because we've not done anything, nothing will work. We've not done anything. Nothing will actually work here. See, it won't work. Okay, so let's do for uh, VLAN 30. Let's get a pull for VLAN 30. So it's very very simple. Just say a PDCP pool. Uh, it was finance department. Fin. Then we, we issue the network, which was uh, 3.0. The network was 3.0. And default router should be uh, the sub interface, which was uh, 3.1. And DNS you can also assign as 3.1, although it's not important in this case. Exit and do right. So we are done configuring interval and routing with, uh, I mean DCP with the interval and routing. So what was uh, a little bit challenging here 
is uh, the whole process. So I'll just highlight a few steps here. Um, let me just come here again and request. It will it should now come. You can see it has come. Oh, yeah. So the first step that you do, as I'm doing here, uh, we create topology. Uh, we create topology topology and turn all hosts all computers or PC to the HCP option you can remember we were clicking we were clicking any every PC uh, it was it's it comes by default under static but now you have turned it to DCP so after doing that, after creating the topology and turning all PC to DCP option, now you create VLANs. VLANs and assign them to the port, to the respective ports. Also, configure trunk here so we should also configure trunk port that we did on the switch the trunk port should be the port that is connecting to the router because it is this port that will be used to transport all of these VLANs this one this port here all right so after configuring uh, the two these now the configuration on the switch is done now we come to the router when you come to the router um, let's say this was a switch switch <clears throat> and now we come to the router okay so on the router the first thing that we do we do intervene and routing intervene and routing so in intervene and routing we create sub interfaces we create sub interfaces Assign them IP, associate it, asso, uh, asso, associate them first, associate to VLAN numbers, and assign them IP. So that's the first thing we do. We do in the VLAN routing. We create sub interfaces, associate them to VLAN numbers, and assign them IP. After doing that. We now create pools. Number two, we create DCP pools. We create DCP pools. Create uh, DHCP pools. Pa, uh, as per the as, as per the VLANs in the networks in the network in the as per the VLANs then as per the VLANs and network in each VLAN so we should get these people as per the VLANs and the network in each VLAN so uh and then not just just that's nb uh not the default gateway the default gateway of each pool should be the ip uh 
IP address of the sub interfaces created for each VLAN. And that's all. <clears throat> and that's all. So as you can remember, we, just, we started with a simple topology and we turned whole PCs to use DSP option. We created uh, VLANs on this switch and assigned them to ports as per uh, their respective VLAN here. We also configured a trunk port here to allow the passage of these multiple VLANs. Then we came to our P computer here, we, we, our router here, we created sub interfaces, then we associated them to, uh, we associated them to uh, VLAN numbers, as you can see here, somewhere here, yeah. We created uh, sub interfaces, we associated, we associated them to VLAN numbers, and finally assigned them IP addresses. Then we went ahead to create DSCP pools as per, the, as per the VLANs and the network in each VLAN. So if you go down here, we started, we started with uh, IT pool, IT pool. IT pool was in VLAN 10. So VLAN 10, the network was this one. And the default gateway here is called default router. The default router should be the IP address of the, uh, the sub interface of VLAN 10, which is this one. And that's how you achieve DCP server plus intervillian routing uh, configuration. So maybe if you just have question to answer. No, this uh, the one you write is very helpful. So when I see the uh, on switch, when I write down those uh, steps, it's very helpful. Thank you. Oh. So uh, I should be writing them actually. <laughs> Sorry, I should be writing yeah. them actually. Okay. So yeah. even here, I just write them. I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know it will become this helpful uh, actually. So that that's what I want uh, mostly. It's very helpful. Okay. Okay. Sure. So mm -hmm. even on this on this topology here, we said that uh, we just create. Uh, um, so I'll start with the. Uh, uh, this sign just create a simple topology as below uh, and turn all PC to use to use uh, the HCP option. So here we were not do, do, doing anything on the switch. We didn't do anything on the switch. It was only on the router. So what we do in the router was to assign it IP addresses first. So on the router, so on the router, So we are saying IP address, IP addresses to all the connecting interfaces. Then note, oh no, no, no. Then number two, this is number one. Number two. Number two, what we should do is to um, configure DCP relay agent. Configure DCP relay agent on the connecting interface uh, to the LAN. So, uh, just a minute. We configure DCP relay agent. Relay agent is something like that. When I tell you something to, uh, I, when you receive any information from from me and you don't, you don't have that information, information I mean, 
and you know the person who has that information, you ask that person. So this interface should be the relaying agent from this LAN here. So when this LAN is trying to ask IP address, because they will be sending messages, hey, kindly help me with IP address. So this interface will receive those messages that these computers wants IP address. Being that this is a relaying agent, it will transfer that request to the server. So it's the server that will respond to these clients here. So configure the CP relaying agent on the connecting interface to the LAN. So this is the connecting interface to the LAN. All right. So we go to DHCP server. Uh, DHCP server device. Okay. So on the DCP server device, the first thing we do, we do static IP address allocation. We do what's called static IP address allocation. Uh, static, static IP address allocation. After doing that, uh, we now create pools. We go to, we go to number two, we go to services then under services we go to dcp then under dcp we turn it on turn option dcp option after you turn on the dcp option now step three we create pools pools as per the department network as for the department network so uh so when as you can remember here we created a pool and we called it it department so you could see a uh, default gateway of the pool should be the IP address of the connecting interface of the router, this one. So uh, I don't know how I can write that, but it's quite much simple. And here also uh, you can uh, you can give starting IP address. So here you can give starting IP address that I want it to start from this point. Yeah. So it's just quite much easier like this. So when you come to these computers, they should be able to pick IP addresses from the DCP server. Is there any other question that I should uh, uh, highlight?